I'm Rick Chandra. I'm the division head and the fellowship director for rhinology, sleep, and skull-based surgery. Uh, my name is David Kent. Uh, I'm an assistant professor of otolaryngology uh, here at Vanderbilt. Uh, I'm also the director of sleep surgery within the department. Not only does a resident get to know what I think or how I would approach something, but the institution is very supportive, not just in our department, but it's sort of a pillar of the place to be collaborative. Uh, we're not incentivized to compete with oculoplastic surgeons for orbital surgery. We're uh, incentivized to do them together. When I was looking for a job several years ago, one of the things that you try to pick up on going anywhere are the intangibles. Um, it's just how people communicate with one another, how they interact with the residents. Um, and that was one of the things that gave me a warm, fuzzy feeling about Vanderbilt, was just, people seem to enjoy being around one another and to, and, and to enjoy talking with one another. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't want to, you know, get through the day and go home to our families and that sort of thing, but um, I have a lot of fun. He's very supportive as my division chief in terms of the stuff that I'm working on, even if it's totally outside his wheelhouse. We can joke about work stuff, we can, uh, we can talk about personal stuff, um, and I think that we have a good working relationship with the residents. In the, in we can the throw season. paper clips into that little jar across yeah, the room. <laughs> exactly. Now, it's, you know, and ones, yeah. <laughs> We do a lot of things in the research arena that span the gamut from uh, basic science and translational research to uh, surgical robotics and things that are much more clinically focused. On the more basic science end, uh, we have uh, active tissue banking protocols of, for patients that are undergoing surgery uh, for chronic sinusitis, nasal polyps. Uh, uh, those are archived in, in uh, Dr. Turner's lab under open IRBs and uh, translational research looking at, at cytokines, uh, hierarchical cluster analysis, uh, mechanisms of disease uh, are, are studied uh, over long periods of time now using that data set. Uh, the grant funding Dr. Turner has is pretty substantial and keeps us uh, fit for the next uh, many years to come. Dr. Chowdhury does a lot of uh, research, not only in, in translational science, but also he has a background in uh, computer modeling and uh, statistics as well as uh, machine learning. Residents are, like I said, involved in all of these projects and uh, they are first authors on these publications, that a lot of which go into high impact journals like Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. It's not only an opportunity here to participate in that research, but to do it at a very high level. Our graduates uh, come out truly having unique and deep expertise in, in several areas that are basic science and clinical science related. So my own research is in the area of uh, surgical treatments for sleep apnea as well as um, new diagnostic techniques for uh, sleep apnea. So there's um, uh, areas in both sleep medicine and uh, sleep surgery that I'm working. We just got actually grant funding to investigate a possible new form of uh, neurostimulation for the upper airway. Uh, neurostimulation, or uh, more commonly called in the community, hypoglossal nerve stimulation for treatment of sleep apnea has become um, uh, a, a popular and, and very effective uh, new surgical treatment for treating sleep apnea. It's much less invasive than uh, some of the surgical treatments that uh, have been developed in the past, and uh, the success rates are promising, but it's really a minority of patients that with sleep apnea that are ultimately candidates for it. And one of the things that we're trying to do here from an, an academic and research perspective is open up the pool of people who can benefit from these sorts of therapies. Ron not only supported that idea and the rest of the department, they were enthusiastic about it and they've continued to be so. They provided resources for me when I got here so that I could build towards the grant funding that we have now that I think are going to be real uh, game changing so that I could um, uh, move the field forward. All of these projects involve residents and uh, we've taken it to another level. It, it's nice, but it doesn't take a lot to just you know, find a series of 20 patients with a particular problem and write observational studies out of that. So our volumes are higher so that we can actually have larger gr groups of patients with these problems, but then to take deep dives into the problem where uh, you'll actually know something at a biochemical level about these patients that, uh, that another rhinologist at another academic institution might not have the depth of understanding that our residents do just after having had completed that kind of a project. You know, residents, it's part of the, you know, it's, you guys make me think, and there's times where, where whether it's how to take care of a patient in the office or whether it's in the operating room, there's a lot of, you know what, I didn't think of that, and or the situations where you uh, force me to explain what I'm going to do 
And watching the light go on when you guys kind of get it, it, it that, that's rewarding too.